Revit API is a huge collection of classes. And if you want to get comfortable using it, well, you better understand OOP basics, which stands for Object Oriented Programming. It's a big concept in programming, but you only need to understand absolute basics so you know how to work with Revit API classes. And that's exactly what I want to simplify in this tutorial. Once you get the basics, it will help you read the docs much better, and you will also understand how to use classes in your own code. And let's begin with absolute basics. So what is OOP? OOP stands for Object Oriented Programming, and it's a specific way to structure your code with classes that provide more features to reuse and abstract your code. Think of it as a workflow to structure your code where everything is an object based on a template. You can define classes like walls, floors, views, which would be your templates. And then you're going to add functionality with properties and methods and create multiple instances based on these classes. I won't go deep into how to write classes inside the code, but I want to explain you the main concepts behind them so it's easier to deal with Revit API knowing OOP. And when talking about OOP, you will often hear about four pillars, which refer to the four main concepts that object-oriented programming kind of provides. The first one is encapsulation, inheritance, abstraction, and lastly, polymorphism. I know it sounds like a little bit fancy words, but don't worry, it's not that complicated. And I'm going to break them down one by one so you understand the benefits of using it. Let's start with the first one, encapsulation. Encapsulation means that you keep all related data and functionality together in a single unit or a class. For example, think of a coffee maker as a class. I need to store different values like amount of beans, water, maybe what's the wattage of this. And in a class, we could store all this data under properties. We could define a fixed name of a property and then hold various data, depending on how much beans and water is inside. It can also create different kinds of coffee. And these are the actions. So we could write different functions and store them as methods inside of a class. Remember, the methods, they are the actions that objects can perform. And this would be a template for our coffee maker. Now, here's the kicker. There may be many coffee makers, like instances, based on the same blueprint or class, like specific brand and model, for example. And while they can all hold different data and produce a bit different tasting results, they're all based on the same blueprint that comes with the same functionality from a factory. And that's exactly what classes are for. You define a blueprint for your object, you specify properties and methods it can hold, and then you can create many instances of that class that can access the same functionality, but they still can hold a little bit different data. In terms of code, that would look something like this. You define your class name, then you can define a bunch of properties and specify default values that can be overwritten later on in methods or different ways. And you're going to add methods, which are the functions inside of a class. And then you can use this template to create any number of instances of this class. And they will all have the same functionality and properties to hold data. This is just an example to illustrate the structure. You see, in Revit API, it's full of classes like walls, floors, roofs, views, and many others. And all of these instances in your project are based on these classes. So they can share the same functionality based on the template. And they can also store different data in, for example, properties. So in a nutshell, encapsulation is just keeping everything inside of kind of one unit, right? Like a class. Now, the second concept is inheritance. Inheritance is a really important OOP concept that you need to understand for Revit API. It's used to create new classes based on the base class. And all the new classes are going to inherit all the attributes of a base class. Let me explain with an example. Revit API has many different base classes that are primarily used to build other classes. So they all share the same properties and methods from the base class. For example, element class would be the best example. It contains the most basic functionality any 2D or 3D element in Revit needs, like what's the ID, category, parameters, you can get type ID by using methods, and so on. The class of element, it's not used on its own, but it's used to build all these other classes like wall, floor, room, and pretty much all classes are based on the element class once you start working with Revit API. And the reason is simple. All of these classes, they need the same functionality. They all need this information like element ID, what's the category, and so on. So instead of kind of defining each class individually and writing all of these properties over and over, you define it once in the base class, and then you inherit it in all the other classes. Or maybe let's have an an another example. Let's talk about views in Revit. There are different classes like view plan, view section, view 3D, view drafting, and so on. And all of them based on view class, which is a base class for all the views. So they all get the main functionality from the view class because they all need things like outline, crop box, and so on. And they also have extra features for their specific view classes because section, 3D, drafting view, plan, they all have different characteristics and they might need extra kind of properties and methods to kind of reflect that. On top of that, this base view class is also based on the element class. 
So you can have multiple layers of inheritance for each class in the chain, and each layer will inherit everything from the previous one. This way, if you're going to look for something like view plan, for example, it's going to inherit everything from the view class, like Cropbox, Outline, and many others. And then it's also going to inherit everything from the element class, like ID, category, get type ID. So our final view plan class has all the attributes from element, all the attributes from view, and also it has its own special attributes as well. This is the ultimate workflow to reuse your code very efficiently. However, you don't need to create these complex relations in your own code, unless you work on a very large complex tools. It's mainly used on large code bases where it makes sense to create a lot of different classes and reuse functionality at scale. And I just want you to understand this concept so you find it easier to explore Revit API documentation. Because you will notice that many classes share the same properties and methods coming from different classes. And I know that beginners find it confusing, right? They see the property ID, but it comes from element and not the wall class, and they get a little bit mixed up. It will make so much easier for you to track where the property or method comes from once you understand what is inheritance and how it works. And that's pretty much inheritance in a nutshell. There's this kind of relations where children classes inherit everything from the parent classes. That's it. Now, moving on to the next concept and it's abstraction, or I like to simplify it as hide internals. Abstraction concept means showing only the necessary features while hiding the complex implementations in your code. For example, if you would use wall flip method, you don't need to know all the complex geometry calculations happening behind the scenes. You only need to know how to use it and what kind of results you get. The rest is handled by the class itself with this kind of internal functionality. That's the point of abstraction. This is about kind of creating these public and private methods which are accessible only inside the class itself or kind of outside when you work with instances. In Python, however, there is no strict way to hide internals. But there is a general convention where you mark with underscores kind of internal um, internal attributes. This way, other developers know that these attributes are not supposed to be used outside of the class definition. Well, not even inside, they shouldn't be really touched. But you've probably already seen a bunch of different attributes with these underscores, and they maybe even confused you. But in general, you heard that you should completely ignore them and you will be fine. And this is the abstraction concept. All right, and lastly, the fancy word, polymorphism, or to simplify it, one to many. To put it simply, this concept allows us to use the same attribute name in classes to get different behavior. For example, in Revit API, you could use location property for many different classes. However, you might get different results. If you're going to try to read the location property on the wall, you're going to get location curve. But if you're going to read the same property location on the door, you will get location point. In this case, we use the same property name location and we get different results. It can be location curve or location point because elements have different logic. Wall is a line-based element and door is a point-based element. Therefore, we get different results and it all makes sense. This concept is more about working with multiple classes, preparing for the future and being flexible. In terms of Revit API, just keep in mind that sometimes there might be different behavior when you use the same thing, but overall, it's not that often and also it's going to be very logical when you encounter it. So you won't be surprised much if you encounter it. Again, this is about kind of reusing your functionality and being very flexible with different classes while using the same names for the attributes. Okay, and these are the basic concepts of OOP. Once you're going to get them, it will make it easier to explore Revit API because you know the principles on which it was built. OOP in general is a very advanced concept and it has a lot more to offer. And it's mainly used on larger code bases where you need to reuse a lot of code. Also, certain languages require you to code using OOP structure, but in Python, it's optional. So you don't need to become OOP expert and start using all these classes inside your Python scripts. It's much simpler to use existing classes than creating your own. And don't worry if it's a bit hard or a bit overwhelming. You will learn it over time as you get more comfortable with programming in general. It took me a while to understand why OOP can be useful and when to actually use it myself, because all tutorials talk about this animal relations and also these employee tables. But just give it some time and it will come to you, especially when you work on larger and more complex tools. Then eventually you're going to get to the point where you're going to start thinking how to make it more efficient, how to make it easier to kind of maintain, and you will naturally come to classes or OOP concept in general. I hope I managed to simplify this concept for you and you learned something new. And if you want to learn more about Revit API, you can check my platform learnrevitapi.com where you can get my free ebook beginner's guide to Revit API and learn more about my comprehensive training to become more productive with Revit automation. My name is Eric Fritz and I wish you happy coding. See you in the next one. Goodbye.